The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Now when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. The Holy Spirit moves, both in its own being and in others. And we really should expect this because the book in Scripture where the Holy Spirit is mentioned most tells us so. It is in the book of the Acts of the Apostles that this happens. That the Holy Spirit enters into the picture and moves things. People move. They speak in ways that they have not spoken before. They heal in the name of Jesus. They stand before the authorities, threatened with violence, and proclaim that in Jesus Christ the love of God has come into the world. Once the Holy Spirit gets involved, those who are locked away in fear are sent out into the world to face that fear. The Holy Spirit fills and equips. The violent wind fills the house, engulfing the apostles in the midst of the maelstrom. The Holy Spirit fills the disciples, giving them the ability to speak in new ways. It comes as the breath of Christ breathed out upon them. It goes out into the gathered crowd, fills 3,000 of those who were present who joined the disciples. It is poured out upon us at baptism, washing over us. The Holy Spirit gives all believers gifts unique to them, but that are meant to be used for the common good, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, proclamation, all are given by the Spirit for the good of all, for the work of the community that is the body of Christ. We are many who gather in this place, some who have been here generations, some for just a few years, Some who work the land, some who farm cyberspace. We are many. And perhaps to those outside, we look like a pretty diverse group. A bunch of different kinds of people. But we are one body. Made so by baptism. Our unity is not our politics or our jobs, our background or our interests. Our unity is in Christ. Here in this place there is no slave nor free, no Jew nor Greek, no founding member nor newly minted member. We are all one body. One in Christ. Each with gifts given by the Spirit. Gifts that are as varied as we are but each vital to the ministry that we are called to do here on the corner of Rowley and Walker in Ely, Iowa. And these are the eyes that we see our new members joining us today with, wondering what gifts they bring to the body, how the Spirit will work through them in this place to proclaim the mighty acts of God. And these are the eyes by which these sisters and brothers joining us today see us with, wondering how their gifts will fit into the ministry of this place. What part they will play in the work of the body of Christ that is St. John. This is the joy and the wonder of coming together. The excitement we share with those first converts to the faith. Now our text says that the crowd that comes together at Pentecost is bewildered by what they hear. 
Now, the meaning of the word used is something like pouring two mixes together. Things get stirred up for them. What had been clearly identifiable world suddenly has its boundaries blurred. They're unsure, they're put out of place, not seeing how everything fits together, not sure of what all this might be intended to be. In short, the Holy Spirit messes things up. It does not come to the disciples to fortify them in their housing, keep them safe from the forces that will harm them. It does not give them individual superpowers for their own profit or gain. It does not bring a life of ease. Rather, the Holy Spirit comes alongside them, giving them what they need to fulfill Jesus' command, the charge that we hear in the Gospel of John from Jesus as he sends them out into the world even as he was sent. The command in Acts that we heard in our reading last week to go and be Jesus' witnesses to the world. In many ways, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is the last thing we want in our life. And it is the one thing we need for a life of faith. It's the last thing we want in our life because the Holy Spirit moves things. Just look at the story in Acts. The Spirit is not some gentle breeze, but a violent wind stirring things up. An irresistible force that moves those reluctant disciples to speak. To use the gifts they had been given by the Holy Spirit to go out into a world that was hostile to them. The Holy Spirit is the last thing we want because the reaction it evokes from those around us when we do speak. The shaking of heads at this proclamation of the mighty acts of God, the snide remarks, ah, they're drunk. Or, yeah, it's a bunch of superstitious mumbo jumbo. Somebody commented on Wednesday night that the Holy Spirit is dangerous. And it is. Because it moves us into places we don't necessarily want to go. It is not a safe harbor, but encouragement and support along the way. It gives us a voice to proclaim the good news of the love of God and Jesus Christ to a world that does not necessarily want to hear it that will often ignore it, is sometimes hostile to it, but more often lifts up other visions of how the world works, ones that offer paths that are so much easier than this life of faith. And the Holy Spirit is the one thing we need for this life of faith. We need it because, as Martin Luther wrote in his explanation of the third article of the Creed, I cannot, by my own understanding or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, kept me in the true faith. Just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. We need the Holy Spirit because it brings faith. It is only by the Holy Spirit that we who have received that we have received that we can proclaim Jesus as Lord. And it is only by calling upon the name of the Lord that we can be made whole, that we are saved. All we need for faith to rest in God's grace is the gift of the Holy Spirit, God's means of grabbing us up into God's embrace. And that is the message before us today, brothers and sisters. First is the card hold, card hold fact, right? I got some glossolalia of my own. The cold hard fact that we cannot by our own understanding or strength believe in Jesus Christ. That we cannot by our own understanding or strength faith, face the realities of death and destruction and disease. That we cannot by our own understanding or strength navigate this life. We cannot do this life on our own. To try and do so is at worst to try and be like God and at best to deny who God has created us to be. It is not good that man should be alone. To try and live on our own will lead 
only to death. Second is the reality that God does not leave us there. Alone in the face of all the challenges in our life. Alone in the face of a world that can bully us, terrorize us, cut us down. God has come in the person of Jesus of Nazareth to experience all of these things. To take upon God's self the reality of sin, death, disease, and destruction. And through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to bring us again into fellowship. Fellowship with God and with one another. And we don't have to do anything to receive this. It is the Holy Spirit coming on the wings of God's Word in baptism who claims us. It is the Holy Spirit blowing into our lives when we are locked away behind closed doors. It is the Holy Spirit who claims us, who calls us into this fellowship of believers, who makes us holy. And it is the Holy Spirit who keeps us in this true faith and through whom alone we can proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is the Holy Spirit who moves us. So on this Pentecost Sunday, may our congregation be filled with the rush of a violent wind. May the Spirit fill you and stir you to life. And may you, the members of the Fellowship of Believers that is St. John Lutheran Church, go out into this world powered by the Holy Spirit and share with friends and neighbors, strangers and enemies, the mighty acts of God. May the Holy Spirit move.